We are backstage, and now we're sitting with Neil from Three Days Grace, who's opening up this huge production of a show here at the DCU Center. Thanks for hanging out. You don't seem as cold as David Draymond seemed earlier. I'm Canadian. I know exactly. <laughs> he moved. He moved to Hawaii and got soft. You're from Canada. Uh, you're from Canada. Canada. You're from Canada. Yeah. That's not the first time I've heard Canadian. Yeah, you're from Canada, <laughs> and you're like, this isn't even that cold. It's not bad. I mean, you know, I am a little bit jaded on this tour because this tour started in San Diego, so it's like I was golfing in a t-shirt in January, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, but uh, but no, it's it's been it's been amazing. I, I don't mind the cold weather. In fact, we had a couple days off in Denver, and I. I went into Vail and like Airbnb for a bit and snowboarded for a couple of days. So this has been like a, a cool tour for a lot of reasons. You Airbnb? Yeah. Do the people that rented you the house know that the guys from Three Days Grace were the ones there? No, it was just me and they just, uh, there's just a key code. I went in there and, and <laughs> just jumped on the gondola. And... Did you go through the music collection in the Airbnb to find out if they had any of your albums? <laughs> no, it was like a. It was kind of like a, I don't know, a chalet type of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. You guys were off last night. Did you sneak into the garden and go to the Bruins game last night? I did not, no. Oh, okay. um, you couldn't really get anywhere. Well, I, I stayed here last night. Oh, okay. And so uh, I planned on going and having a couple drinks, but then the Michael Buble concert got out. And there was no Uber. There's no way, means of transportation to get anywhere. Let so. me tell you what. The chicks at a Michael Buble concert. They've got to be crazy, right? Yeah, probably, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I like Buble at Christmas time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like for one day. For a couple days, yeah. You know, you those... know, I'm a big Frank Sinatra guy, though, so I do appreciate that kind of crooning kind of music. Well, it's you know, you can be romantic in a hot tub and put on some Sinatra and totally. be all right. And he's Canadian. You know? Yeah, see, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Uh, I had to ask you, because you guys recorded one of your albums here in Massachusetts at Longview Farm Studios, yeah. and... Uh, Everybody says that place is haunted, and I wanted to ask you if it was. I, I think I, I'm not a big paranormal kind of, kind of guy, but there definitely is some vibes in there. Like, you know, there's so much history, right. and, like, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's old. It's, it's, it's nice, but it's, it does have, like, a weird vibe to it. Um, it was an inspiring place to make, you know, it was our first record and our first real experience in, a, like, a proper studio. So um, it, it was a great time. I loved it. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of out in the middle of nowhere and yeah. whatever, but it definitely has a little bit of a... Yeah, and then if we wanted to take a t time away from the studio, this is where we came. We came to Worcester. Yeah. I don't know if Shabooms is still here or not. No, it's a Mexican joint now Mexican that makes joint. really good margaritas okay. across the street. Oh, yeah? yeah. Oh, wow. We can go over later Let's if you go want. Over. All right. I love a margarita. <laughs> the last time you and I sat down and talked, it was at... Uh, the Songus, I think, you were touring with Shinedown, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was right when kind of all the shakeup in the band happened. Mm -hmm. And I remember you just saying, you know what, we just, we just want to, you know, make more music and move the band forward. And everything you told me that you wanted to have happen that night has happened. We're very fortunate, and you know, we we've because we've always considered this, this thing to be like a, a journey, you know, into the unknown. You don't really know what's around the corner. That's part of the fun of it, you know. And uh, and I think it was fate. Like it all, it all happened pretty quickly. It's crazy to think it's been uh, over six years now. Um, and and uh, but we just kind of just kept going, and we ended up writing like you know that was that was 2013 mm -hmm. uh, around this time. Um, but uh, we, that's how long it's been since I've seen yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And it was like we just kind of kept our heads down and just kept going and and matt has really kind of you know really taken ownership of, of being a front man and then while we were on that tour we wrote painkiller and we wrote i am machine and so we had those two songs so we just instead of like waiting to to like go and record a whole record we were like why don't we just go and just go into the studio and we'll bang out these two songs and just put them on the radio and then and then go from there and, and that's when people like really kind of uh, embraced it and like pay, both songs went to number one and then that kind of really sort of set the tone and when we took the pressure off and we felt uh, like this was this was uh, this was meant to be I was talking to David a few minutes ago and you know we were just talking about the the level of show this big stage and mm -hmm. You know, everybody's been telling us that rock and roll's been dead for, what, a couple decades yeah. now? Do you feel the resurgence coming back to rock and roll a little bit? Because it 100%. seems like all the bands feel it. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Worldwide, too. Like, uh, you know, we've been fortunate. We've been doing a lot of stuff overseas, and uh, and rock and roll is just, I think, is, is alive and kicking uh, everywhere. And I think part of it is that... People do get tired of uh, so much like overproduced, contrived stuff. Like you know, all, all you know. I mean, to each their own. Everything's you know, everybody does, does their own thing. But like you know, after so many singing shows where it's just like 
everything's kind of just uh, you know backing track and everything's super produced and analyzed and stuff. I think people do always have a tendency to want to feel that danger in music and that rawness and that just abrasiveness that's a little rough around the edges. And, and know think, that you're actually playing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, and I think that that, that will always be there. People are always going to want to feel that genuine sense of, of, of danger and realness and rawness and aggression and stuff. Um, that's always going to be there, and I think rock and roll is, is the place to get that. How have these shows been for you? Because David was saying just how amazing it's been, the response from the crowd. I got to assume it's been the same for Three Days Grace. Yeah, it's it's been insane. You know, the I think the it's, the two bands together is a great combo. It's a great night of music, and uh, the, those disturbed guys they've been really really great to us. And um, and yeah, like you know, Madison Square Gardens the other night was just uh, that was a first for us and and for them as well. And uh, yeah, it's just the energy is 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 like electric out there. We're feeling it on stage. Yeah. Well, that's one of those venues, you know, Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. But for me, I grew up not far from here, mm-hmm. and this is where I went to my first concert. Oh yeah. So to come back into this building and see shows and be able to go up on that stage, like it's for me, the teenage carry is like, oh my god. Oh, yeah. Well, Ma- Mass is always such a rock, you know. There's so such a b- good rock scene and the energy and stuff, you know. Anyway, like I find, you know, the, the eastern side of the U.S. where we're at is just like there's a lot of there's a lot of metalheads and there's just a lot of like true rock fans, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. So it's yeah. cold. We're pissed off. <laughs> yeah, sure, exactly. It doesn't explain Canada. <laughs> Because you guys of... are all so nice, <laughs> and it's really cold up there. Yeah, uh, I know. Or should I, I say Canada? Um, you can say whatever you yeah. want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really appreciate you hanging out with us. Uh, I'm super psyched to see the show tonight. The reviews have just been amazing. And I, when Disturb's on and they're lighting everything on fire, please mm-hmm. tell me you guys are back there toasting marshmallows. Yeah. Because the pictures are impressive. Yeah, don't worry. For, for people coming out to the show tonight, don't put too much Aquanet in your hair. <laughs> <laughs> that was me in this building in like 1986. Yeah, yeah, it's flam- quite flammable. <laughs> All right, we're backstage at the DCU Center with Neil from Three Days Grace.